Hi, this is Joshua O'Shea from the Glen Ellen Public Library. Today I have with me Kat Citrone from Cali of College Nannies, Sitters, and Tutors in Wheaton. And we're going to be looking at the state of standardized testing, especially with um, the quarantine being lifted, but still having a lot of the COVID um, expectations and limitations on how things are done. We are recording um, for the Glen Ellen Public Library, and that is where you can go to find out more information about what the library offers for free resources. And in the chat, in just a few moments, I will put the hyperlink for the library, as well as for college nanny city sitters and tutors to get in contact with Kat um, if you have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. And then you can, t uh, Kat, you can take it away. Okay, great. Thank you, Josh. Yep. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Kat Citrone. I am the Learning Center um, Manager for uh, the Wheaton and Barrington uh, College Nanny Sitters and Tutors. I am the manager on the tutor end. Uh, there are two divisions. Uh, we have two lovely managers on the child care end as well. I'm going to share my screen with you. I did put together a presentation just to keep us focused and then we will also welcome questions and comments towards the end. So if you give me just a moment. I will share my screen. And here we are. So today we're going to talk about the state of the SAT and S and ACT. And um, there is a lot of changes going on and they change rapidly. I have a couple of uh, emails and newsletters I had mailed to me with other changes that just happened this morning. So we will try and keep you updated as we are able. So I'm going to my next screen. Um, I am a licensed teacher. I have experience in school administration and academic intervention. I worked with students and families in the areas of test prep, college application, essay writing, special education, crisis management. Um, in the picture you see uh, my husband who is also a teacher at Elmhurst College. So we are pretty firmly grounded in education and our um, Dalmatian keiki. Uh, we really here at College Tutors and in my private practice like to deliver personalized services to family. That's what separates us from the other companies. And we do believe in students and family first. Our clients are our top priority. Uh, right now, I'm on the online mom groups for the Glen Ellen moms and Wheaton moms and Elmhurst. And I'm seeing a lot of discussion going on. Uh, there's concern over the ACT and SAT students who have prepped and I can give you an example uh, from one of our caseload we have a family who has spent hours and hours and hours with their students in test prep and um, has also made a financial investment and that student's last two ACT tests had been canceled. So we wanted to go through this presentation today to speak with you about that uncertainty and maybe just to calm some of the anxiety around that, to let you know what you can do and what, we, what you can control and among the times where we can't control things. So we're gonna go through this presentation. Hopefully at the end, it'll give you a little more information. So what's happening, I wish I could tell you. Uh, no one knows for certain, it's always changing. There is an official ACT test scheduled for this weekend. However, many of the testing centers have been closed. So if you, received, if you were scheduled for that test and you received a message saying that that test was canceled, uh, hopefully they gave you the information to register for the next one. We have a slide on the testing dates that's coming up. Uh, one thing that is important is to keep registering and we'll tell you why as we move on in this presentation. Um, the ACT and SAT, let's think about them as college preparedness exams, not only as exams that high scores will, will get you your scholarship, which they do, or get you into the school of your choice, but these exams really do test to say, hey, are you prepared for the rigor of college? And are you prepared in the subjects in science and in English and in math? And that is the main goal of the test. I know we do think about it as 
these test scores do help us get into college and they do but let's think about it as we are prepared to get into college so the biggest question i'm getting right now is will my high school junior or senior still be taking an act or sat if you've taken the test and you're looking to improve your score, you may or may not have that opportunity. Again, when we share the test dates, you will see you should just keep registering and keep trying to get in. And that is your best defense on taking the test. Um, test dates are still continuing to be changed and canceled. So that's where the uncertainty is. So this is just a list and I will have uh, links to this if you need to contact me, links to all the information that we go through. So my email will also be at the end of this presentation and I'm glad to send you any information. So that June 13th test is still scheduled, but I know that most local testing sites um, have canceled that date with the next date being July 18th. And then you could see the other list of dates so again, we encourage families to keep trying to register and we will discuss why that's still important as we move on. This is the list of SAT dates that are upcoming. And again, you can go to the College Board site and their site is actually pretty easy to navigate and you can find all this information. But again, I'm always glad to just personally send you any information you need if you contact me. So these are the dates that we're hoping and everyone is hoping to go through for the testing dates. So what if your student doesn't get into a test? Uh, what came out today, and I'm gonna go just on my personal computer here, uh, from Forbes Magazine, a story that came out, uh, updated testing policies for the top 20 colleges during the 2021 application cycle. So six of the top 20 schools listed in Forbes America's Tops College have announced test optional policies. So what does a test optional policy mean? It means if you've taken the test and you're satisfied with your score and you're at, at least the 50th percentile, it is your choice to share that score. If you haven't had the chance to take that test, then a little bit later, we will discuss some ways to make your application um, stand out. So if you are able to get the test in, we do recommend it. If you still do have a high test score, your schools will be looking at that high test score as preferable. Um, if your scores were pretty low, if it was your first test, then that isn't a score that you probably would want to share um, with the school. You would either want to try and take another test and super score them or perhaps put your concentration into your um, into your application. So with that in mind, the standardized tests don't always introduce the full capabilities of the students. So there are a lot of other things that you can um, actually do to make your um, application stand out. We'll address that in just a minute. So with my student who was involved in the test prep and who now can't take the test, we're still keeping up on just keeping up his skills in test prep because like we said, even if he can't take the test, these are skills that he's going to need in his college environment. And even on the English writing section, if you think you're writing your essay, these are still skills in the writing and English portion that you will need to complete your application in a comprehensive manner. So again, we're encouraging students to keep up on their studies, to keep up with test prep, but we're not really introducing the rigor of twice a week with 90 minute sessions. We're just trying to keep students fresh on what they've learned until we know exactly which path that they're on. If you haven't started a test prep uh, program yet, then it's a good idea to at least take a practice test. The practice test can show what areas you're weak in, which areas you're strong in, it can help build your confidence. Uh, we proctor practice tests as a complimentary service. Uh, we did it at the libraries when the libraries were open and we will continue to proctor practice tests. It's your best strategy to discover where you're at in your college preparedness skills and what you need to brush up on 
whether you're going to take a standardized test or whether you're just going to put that information into your application. Practicing is a really good strategy. Students mostly have the time now because a lot of team sports aren't going on. Summer camps, a lot of our summer jobs are not going on. So this is really a great time to practice your, uh, your test taking skills and to get a leg up in case you are able to get into one of these testing centers. So we're going to transition now into how do I make my college application stand out with or without an ACT or SAT score. So you should continue to focus on your academics. Even if you're going into your junior or senior year, keep up that GPA because that is going to go into your application. So let's think about why and how you're a strong student and let's continue that course. Let's not jump up off of the course just because we're not going to take a standardized test. Let's think about how we look as a student to the colleges that we're applying to. Now is the best time to gain some service hours. Your application will be rich if you can include some volunteering experience or what you did during the pandemic. I just came up on uh, an article from one of our test prep services who provides our curriculum. And um, one of, they interviewed admissions directors from many colleges. And one of the college admission directors said, I really don't want to see that a student learned how to play guitar over the, over the pandemic, although that's fun and we do want to continue to practice and expand our reach and our, and our skills and our hobbies. But what did you do during the pandemic to enhance your life or enhance the life of others? Uh, you can go through Giving to Page, and they have a lot of remote volunteer opportunities. So really start focusing on what you're going to put on that application that really highlights your citizenship. Get help with your application essay. Now is the time to practice on your writing. Uh, we do offer these services to you. We do offer free consultations just to look at your essay and let you know how much work uh, the essay needs get practicing on that. Your essay really helps you stand out as a student and why you will be a really great addition to the college community. Follow your preferred colleges on social media, interact with those posts and comment and become part of that online community. The more you know about your college, the more you can highlight why you would be a good addition to that college community. So while we can't focus on ACT or SAT, we really do want to start focusing on what it means to be a college student. So again, let's keep up with our studies. Let's keep up with any test prep we've done. If, we, if you haven't done any test prep, please contact us uh, for a practice test. It gives you an idea of where you're at. Let's work on those uh, college applications, on the college essays. My email is here and uh, Josh also said that he would provide my contact information. I can send you links to any of the articles, any of the materials that I use for today's presentation, and I can also keep you updated on what's going on in the college board. So I'm going to stop my sharing now and reach back out to Josh. Hello, here we are. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So um, just like most of the world, it sounds like COVID did put a big pause on what we're doing, but we're not stopping what we're doing. Um, so can you talk a little more about, um, you know, a co the college applicant reader would not necessarily want to see I learned how to play guitar during COVID, but playing I played guitar for um, like an online daycare. Yes. Talk a yes, little more yes. about that sort of thing. Sure. That's the idea. Uh, in fact, I, I understand that students were e-learning during this time and made, many students were feeling isolated and missed uh, the interaction of teachers and students. So I'm a guitar player, so I started my own online guitar lesson uh, series and I offered it to a discount and a sliding scale to maybe families in need. 
and offered some of my services on a volunteer basis. I um, took some of my skills, um, I'm a runner. And so not only did I train for a marathon during the pandemic, but I also um, gave some tips to elementary students on how they could get started in running. So it is about taking your hobbies and taking your skills and taking your gifts and spreading them out to the wider community. And all of those things really make a big difference on a college application. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, are there any other concerns that you've picked up in addition to just, well, I've, I, I was gonna go to this one particular testing, but it got canceled. Are there any other general concerns that you're hearing? Well, one concern that I am hearing is that, um, and, and I come from a school administration background, and I believe that the area schools did the best possible job they could do, and they even surpassed that. And administrators during this time had a lot of work to do, and they had to do it quickly. And I pictured myself in those administrative offices during this time, trying to, um, coming from a curriculum background, trying to um, pull together a curriculum for students who would not be going to school. So schools, I, I think the schools did a great job. However, students did miss um, collaboration, inquiry, discovery, uh, feedback from their teachers. Uh, they missed some instruction that from not being in school seven hours a day. And so in taking the standardized tests, there are some sections of those tests that mm. students may not have had the instruction in. If they didn't get to take a practice test or get to take their official test, they really don't know um, what sections that they were falling short in. What I see a lot on the ACT and um, sometimes on the SAT is students struggle in the geometry section because they haven't taken that since freshman year. Mm -hmm. So if you missed out on some instruction or you haven't had a chance to be very active with the practice tests or in your official exam, you really don't know what concepts that you are missing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there would be um, uh, any good feedback that students could either talking with you or talk, connect with their teachers mm -hmm. from that they would have had and said, hey, can we, can we talk about this? What do you think that, you know, we've kind of missed as, as we're in summertime? Sure. I'm not exactly sure um, how the schools have managed this. I'm sure high school counselors who have their hands on the pulse of what's going on with college admissions, because that is their job. I'm sure that they have given families some options on where to find certain information. But as far as I'm concerned um, with our test prep services and with our homework help services, I, I, families can reach out to um, even just look at a practice test. I can give them information on how to find that. Uh, if students look at the material on a practice test, they can get a pretty good idea of what they know and what they don't know, even if they don't want to sit down for the three hours to take the practice test. Mm -hmm. um, those, mm -hmm. those tests are available on the college board. I believe they have one or so version. We have maybe 10 different versions of practice tests. So if a student was interested in taking a practice test virtually, they could contact us. But if they just look, go to the uh, College Board ACT or SAT site, again, we can provide links to those. They can look through a practice test and really decide which concepts. I had a family come to me yesterday. We had a family meeting where the student did look through the, the tests online and said, wow, I really don't remember any of this geometry. So sure. um, now we have a good idea of where to direct them. Also, our family meetings are all, compl all complimentary. We do a free consultation. So if the student and the parent wanted to sit down with us on a remote meeting or um, an in-person center meeting, we would certainly be able to do that to give them some advice on how to proceed because it is hard to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this really does seem like it is a, uh, you know, a family experience, not only with preparing for college, but also um, the questions or the anxieties that can come up 
was looking at testing and applications and how. So do you see, do you do work with, um, that's mainly what you work with is parents coming and asking? We, yeah, I mean, the families typically submit an online inquiry that they want to talk about tutoring for their student or test prep. And for us, our services are different because we just don't sell you a package of test prep or homework help. From the second you put in your inquiry, I contact the family personally and I find out what's going on, whether it is just homework help or it is test prep. And I find out what the student is looking for, what the parent is looking for. And then during the family meeting, I ask specific questions. I ask the student what their goals are and I ask the parent what their goals are and we try to merge those goals. I always say that we build a bridge between the school and the parents and the students. And what that means is that we that there's this foundation that holds everybody up if you think about a bridge that can hold a, you know 100 cars without collapsing because the weight is equally distributed and i feel strongly about that in education and i do that in my private practice as well as as well as the um learning centers that we have to build that bridge. And when the family and the student and the school can work together in unity, we can solve just about any problem. So working through this pandemic and working through um, not being able to get into the testing centers and not being able to have in-person uh, instruction, I, it has really caused us to do even more outreach to families and students and schools to find out how we can assist them. Right, okay, good. Um, well, I think we're about at our time here. Are there, is there any other comments or any other, do you think you'll open up your inbox and you'll get two more information about how things have changed? Is that how quickly? Um, that, that, that is very <laughs> true. Um, this, this email that I just received and they did a webinar, um, Summit Education did a webinar with uh, college admissions and it was really insightful to see what the college admission professionals are recommending and also what they're going through because, you know, the college is really, they have a process and that process really got discombobulated. And so <laughs> it was interesting to see how the colleges are rallying, but what I see from the colleges is that they're not rallying to save themselves. They're rallying to give these the best service they can to families. And I really find that attractive. That's great. Admirable. And that is our approach as, as well. Uh, I've offered um, free homework help hotlines throughout the pandemic. I've always left myself available to parents just to give me a call for anything because I think that as a community, and you know with the library yourself, we have to um, support the community in the best way that we can. And that's what our jobs are all about, whether we're on exactly. the front line or, or behind the line, right? Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap that up there. I don't have any questions at the moment, but again, anybody can contact Kat. I put her email up there um, for some free information about how you can do your own research and also what, what they can do for you. Um, like you said, we're always trying to support our community and everybody kind of feels a little messy. Everybody feels a little anxious and everybody is really trying to look out and help the people that um, are looking to get what they need. So, yeah, thank you so yep. much, Ash. Yeah.